Soul Sisters, it's Jasmine Lauer here, and today we are going to talk about seven characteristics of a woman of God because biblical womanhood is beautiful. Despite what the world might say, I'm here to tell you it is a beautiful, it is a powerful in the natural as well in the spirit realm thing to be a woman of God. So let's get right into it. So number one, a woman of God should love and fear the Lord. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, it says, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. So God should be at the center of every area of your life. I don't care if you're married, you're single, you have children, if you work full time, if you work from home, regardless of what we do, God should be at the center. And what does that mean, God is at the center? What that means is that we are allowing God's word and Holy Spirit to guide us. We understand that nobody is perfect, right? Absolutely no one is perfect. But at the end of the day, it's important that our heart should be to love our Father as He loves us. Our heart should be to please the Father, right? And make sure that the way we are living is coming in alignment with what His Word says. Number two, number two is a woman of God prays. I know for myself that prayer, being able to talk to my Heavenly Father, connect with my Heavenly Father has really helped me over the years, especially with any type of anxiety or depression or worrying because it's always been a nice way for me to learn. Guess what? God speaks. When we come into his presence, we should come with expectation that he is going to talk to us. And in Matthew 6, 6, this is what it says. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. So when we pray, know that God is meeting us there. I don't care what it is. There's nothing too small. There's nothing too big that's off limits for us to go and talk to God to. And what makes a woman of God different from maybe a person that is in the world? And listen, there's no shame. If by chance you came across this video and you are not a believer, this is no attack. But we know we are victorious in Christ Jesus. Regardless of what comes our way, we have the victory. The battle is won, right? We are covered by the blood. And when you go into prayer and you talk to God, it's like a, a phone call. The Lord is going to speak back. He always does. I mean, there are countless times that as a woman of God, I have gone in prayer to the Lord and God has guided me. I can remember waking up at 444 and I'm like, why am I up? And I had forgot before I went to sleep, one of my prayers was, God, show me, your, show me my purpose, my calling, actually, my calling for this next season in my life. So when I woke up at 444, I didn't even, I forgot that I had prayed, right? And my father who loves me, wake up, Jazz, come meet with me. And I knew God was calling me. So I set the atmosphere. I'm in my prayer closet. And listen, if you don't have a prayer closet, it's fine, okay? It could be a little corner in your room. It could be the shower. It could be the bathroom, wherever. Meet with God when he, when he is tugging on your heart. So at 444, I get up. And the Holy Spirit begins to speak and give me divine downloads and showing me the exact city my family is going to move to, giving me um, little teeny tiny hints as to where I'm going to be working. Fast forward over six months later, I'm living in the city he told me that I was going to move to. How did this start? Because of prayer. So never underestimate prayer. Number three, a woman of God reads the Bible. It's so important that we remember the Word of God is alive. It is powerful. 119, 105 says this, Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So the Word of God gives a woman of God direction. 
we can find clarity. We can find peace in God's word. We can find anything that we need for our journey here on earth in the word of God. I hope you've ever heard this acronym. I believe I was in college when I heard this acronym. This acronym for the word Bible is BEST instructions before leaving earth y'all that is the truth everything that we need to help us stay in peace despite chaos despite setbacks despite life life in we can find in the word of god and we don't just read our bibles we also apply it to our lives. And to number four is we apply God's word to our everyday life. Psalm 119.11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. So a lot of times we can find ourselves in situations like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. This guy is really going fast in this relationship. He wants to move in. Um, he don't want me to meet his family. I feel like God told me to wait and save myself for marriage, but he coming on real strong and he said he can split the bills with me. Stop, I've been there, right? And we can feel so confused. God, I need an answer. Knowing goodness well, I can look in God's word. We are a chosen generation. You can even Google it. What does the Bible say about living with someone before you're married? What does the Bible say about fornicating before marriage? What does the Bible say about stealing, about being selfish, about being whatever? Listen, it is found in God's word. And I love how this verse says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Because I feel that for myself, so many years I was just fumbling around in the dark because I was not doing my part to study God's word and hide it in my heart, store it in my heart, in my mind. Because the more we study God's word, the better equipped we are to fight the schemes of the enemy. Number five is to walk in integrity. As a woman of God, we should be behaving the same at home as we are at work, as we are with friends, as we are at church. Listen, we are called to live Christian holistic lifestyle. So that means that our faith is overflowing to every area of our lives. As we walk in integrity, that is a beautiful way to let our light shine. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 7 says, the righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. So I know it says him, but this applies to us two women of God. It is a blessing to know that when you are talking to a woman of God, we're going to be honest, right? We're not, we are not. We need to be keeping it 100. Yes, we are not perfect at all, but it is important that if we have an opportunity to tell the truth, we're going to be honest because at the end of the day, this is the part. What is the difference between a woman of God and a woman in the world? A woman of God should be operating in integrity, should be an image bearer of her heavenly father, right? And our, our God, the God that we serve is a God of truth, is a God of love and order and light and so much and faithfulness, all these different things. But in the world, people are willing to scheme, cheat, lie, manipulate. Who does that sound like? The enemy, right? So it's very important that if that is an area in your life where you struggle with being honest, right? Yeah, we all gotta slow down and just check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. Number six is a woman of God embraces a life of modesty. So generally when we hear that word modesty, you may think of just on the outside with your attire. I do agree because there are plenty of scriptures that speak about that. But when you hear the word modesty, I love this quote where it says, modesty is an attitude of humility and decency in dress, grooming, language, and behavior. If you are modest, you do not draw undue attention to yourself. Instead, you seek to glorify God in your body and in your spirit. So yes, sometimes I know, I know how I am, and I'm gonna be honest, I'm, I'm becoming more confident as I get older. I like to look nice. I like to wear clothes that, 
you know, are comfortable, but you know, my husband, it draws his attention. He's like, oh, it's beautiful, but I'm not gonna have all the girls out. I'm not going to wear things that can draw or distract or tempt another man or even woman, okay? I asked the Lord to really help me. I even invite my husband into what I wear. There are times that I have put several friends um, <laughs> in a situation where I'm like, look at this, look at this, are these pants too tight? Like, I, I just wanna be careful because I know that at the end of the day, it's about our hearts, right? Sometimes we can put on an outfit and go to a specific place just hoping and praying somebody looking at us. And my pastor was talking about this recently. And you know you marry. And you know you got a whole husband, right? You know you got a whole husband or you got a whole fiance, but maybe y'all arguing and you just want a little bit of attention. No, no, do not give the enemy a foothold, right? So that's a part of the modesty connected to our behavior as well. And I love this verse from Romans chapter 12, verse two. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So anywhere you look, whether you're in the grocery store, at the beach, watching TikTok, Facebook, walking down the street, you may see examples of something that's far from modesty. I'm gonna just put it that way. This is the powerful part. Woman of God, we still can dress beautifully, but still cover ourselves in such a way that we give God the glory, the honor, and the praise, right? I don't want nobody catching me out here in these streets like, Look, she trying to get attention. She trying to get somebody honk at her as she out here running. I'm not saying you can't wear workout clothes or anything like that, but I'm saying be mindful and please, as a woman of God, allow the Holy Spirit to guide you as well as seeking wise counsel. Seven, women of God repent. So repent means to turn away from sin. First, we have to acknowledge that we are all sinners. We all fall short from the glory of God. Every single day, we willingly or unwillingly will sin. But the problem comes in when we think we do not fall short or that we do not sin. I will be the first one to say that over the years, what I have found has drawn me further from God, further from understanding my identity as his daughter, as a woman of God, is when I have sinned and I have tried to cover it up and there's guilt that instantly will rush in. So I pray that you would take this seriously. As women of God, we are called to repent and turn away from our sin. We are to go before the Lord and be honest. Oh my goodness, Lord, in my heart, I am hoarding anger. I am so upset with this person. God, I, I've been lying or I, whatever it is, it's very important that you take it to the Lord because the last thing that you wanna do, and I will say it as many times as I can, is give the enemy a foothold. That causes demonic activity in your life. You are like, what's going on? It just feels like I have bad luck or something's wrong with me. No, you're giving the enemy a foothold, a green light to come in. You're starting to act like his child by manipulating, by scheming, by lying, by cheating, whatever it is, and it's a habitual sin. You have to let it go. And deliverance may also be something that you have to look into because if you are a blood-bought believer, you cannot be possessed by a demon. You cannot. We can be oppressed. That's why I keep saying open door, or you can give the enemy a, a green light. Come on, him and all his little homies, all his minions are now wrecking havoc in your life because you're outside of God's will. So I pray that this all has encouraged you today. You are so loved by God, sis. The Lord desires to use you in a mighty, mighty way. Despite any mistakes from your past, or even maybe your present, the Lord desires for you to draw closer to him because as we draw closer to him, he draws closer to us. That is a promise. And at the end of the day, as a woman of God, it's such a beautiful thing to know God is on your side. 
He is pushing back the darkness. He is literally making ways out of no way for you because he loves you. He loves you so much. You are to die for. That is why God sent his only begotten son onto this earth to be murdered on that cross for you. So the finished work on the cross was for you. You are covered in the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, the ultimate sacrifice. So I'm going to pray for you and then I hope to see you again on my channel. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share if this blessed you. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my sister on the other side of this. I thank you, God, for the great work that you are doing in her life. I thank you for the other women of God that you will bring into her life to help partner with her, to help hold her hands up during those seasons where she may not feel she is strong enough to do it. But God, I know the God that we serve, guess what? We can call on Jehovah Nisi, mighty in battle. God, we can call on Jehovah Rapha when our, we have sickness or illness in our body. El Shaddai, all sufficient one. We don't have to face things that come our way and shake in our boots because the victory today is ours. Lord, we thank you that even in that quiet time that we spend with you praying and worshiping and reading your word, you reveal the plans from the enemy's camp. God, in the name of Jesus, they are canceled. Any assignment to try to take us out, your word says no weapon, absolutely none shall prosper against your children. We find our hope. We find our shalom. We find our rest in your word. We love Love you God and we trust God that you are more than able to transform us we lay at the foot of the cross any anything that is trying to prevent us from drawing closer to you from literally surrendering to you God we lay it down we don't want it anymore reveal to us any areas of our lives where we need healing where we need deliverance God we love you and we just praise you and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all. Remember, I love you. God loves you more. Be encouraged.